everyone, my name is Andre Durbano. I am uh, with an organization called RISO. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing. I was just uh, speaking with Bob Newbar, the uh, publisher of uh, this magazine right here, uh, Implant Impressions. And it's actually a big week for Inkjet. Uh, he was telling me he's flying out immediately at the end of the day today because this week is the Inkjet Summit held in uh, Florida every year. And it's a huge event where some of the biggest print shops uh, in America attend the event and it is 100% wall-to-wall inkjet. It's an actual three-day event so you can kind of see the level of interest that inkjet is gathering and for a lot of those commercial operations they're, they are looking at inkjet as a means to recoup lost profit, uh, lost revenue. It is a huge money maker for uh, commercial organizations. We have a lot of use resources, so I can tell you that they are really into the profits. What I'm going to show you today um, addresses that and of course your world. So the last time I checked, right, an apartment off the uh, uh, the coast of Greece or, or having Bugattis in your uh, garage or, or a giant yacht, okay, these are luxury items I think we can all agree on. I don't know you personally, and I don't know how many of you in this room actually live the lifestyle that can afford some of this stuff. I don't think any of us do. But here's my question. At what point did we start using the word luxury, and we've all seen what luxury is like, but at what point did we start referring to color in the print environment as a luxury? Because every time we attend events like this, and, and school districts, and and other implants and commercial operations, we hear people tell us, oh, color's a luxury. We either uh, minimize it, in some cases, they, some cases they ban it altogether, they're under tight restrictions where color is concerned. And when you consider the fact that we're dealing with education, as all of you are, and we're dealing with kids who today are growing up in a color world where they have color iPads, monitors, phones, TVs, they are introduced to black and white on the first day of grade school, right? They get to grade one, they sit, it's the first day of school, and they're like, what is this? Black and white, I've never seen this before, okay? Well, that's the real world, welcome to school, we have a budget here, and unfortunately color is not something, color is a luxury, we hear those words again. So, more than ever, right, education is competing with all these color items, um, and, and more than ever, color, um, education needs color. So, let's, Let's consider the fact that in many cases the offset has either been pushed to the side, minimized, or eliminated from operations like yours. And in large part, what we see when we walk into operations like yours is this snapshot right here. The production black and white devices on one side, the production color devices on the other, and this great big gap in between. Okay? And, and typically what happens on a daily basis is people walk into an operation like yours and they say, look, I have 2,000 copies of being printing, they're monochrome, the folks and I at the office are kind of toying with the idea this time around, maybe we just might do this in color. So sure enough, the people who run your operations do the math on 2,000 color copies and, 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 and color obviously, and, and they show them the number and there's this sense of, oh, yeah, that's a little too rich for us, I think we'll stick with the monochrome. It's 2019, and they're still having to make decisions about do we print in color, do we print in black and white, can we afford to forego color, that shouldn't be the case, okay? Not when today there is a technology out there designed to bridge the gap between that monochrome and color, and that is designed to bring all these individuals who feel trapped in a monochrome world into the color arena, but without blowing the budget. So how is this done, right? If this is in fact your scenario, and typically color pages on the color side are five cents or less, and monochrome is half a penny or less, way less, and you have this gap, you are now looking at a situation, potentially for some of you, where you need to upgrade your monochrome devices, okay? You've got some money to spend, or maybe you need to look into your color technology, and you think, you know what? I think we're gonna go a little bit different this time around. Maybe we're gonna address this gap. And maybe what we're going to do is invest some money into this middle area and add to our operation cut sheet production color inkjet. What will be the impact to your operation were you to drop an inkjet device, a 
Again, cut sheet, an inkjet device, smack into your operation. What will happen is you will be introducing a third level of pricing um, into your operation, one that is capable, capable of printing color at a penny, penny and a half, maybe as high as two cents depending on, on the coverage. And where you will feel the impact is not here, because typically this is your high quality stuff, right? This is where you're printing on, on coated paper, on gloss, this is uh, for documents where uh, the university is basically sending out marketing pieces. They're looking to impress people. So you're not going to feel the impact of inkjet here, but when, where you will feel it, okay, is all those monochrome pages where suddenly you get to tell somebody, hey, you know that job you talked to me about a few weeks ago? I think we should look at the color option again. And they'll tell you, no, don't tease me. You know, we've been down this path before. We can't afford it. And you go, oh. Hang on a second, right? We've got something new, okay? And this now opens up a color conversation to all those people who were sold the bill of goods that color is too expensive. Color is a luxury, it's not for you, okay? So what will happen, initially, you will begin to see jobs migrate <clears throat> from monochrome onto the inkjet. It'll be maybe a 50, 10, eventually 40, 20, and within 60 days, you will probably be taking half that monochrome volume and converting it to color inkjet. And in the next 60 days that follow, so basically over the course of about six months, you may well have very little monochrome left to do. I mean, frankly, why print in monochrome? Okay? Whether it's a, 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 head, a, a heading you want to add in color, well, why print in monochrome? That doesn't make sense. Okay? Not when you have a technology that will give you color at pretty much the same price, right? So where we're from, Riso, we are a manufacturer of cut sheet uh, production inkjet. We are a complement. We are a complement to the devices you use, right? The monochrome devices, the color. This is a technology that where you've lost your offset, you can now reintroduce ink um, to, to, to your operation. Um, and of course, look at jobs that you know can migrate from monochrome, or sometimes just come off the color device. We operate at a speed of 160 pages per minute, 9,600 impressions per hour, so it's fast. Okay. There's no heat to the technology. We'll talk about that in a second. But fully configured, right? You have our our main engine here. That's what's printing 160 pages per second in this picture. You have it with. Uh, the full finishing capabilities of the paper, the stacker, and of course our, our fiery device. So now that you have an idea of where it fits, where it would fit in your operation, okay, let's look at the types of jobs that you might want to use the technology for. I walked into one print shop recently, uh, a university, and they had lost their offset, and he was so upset, he's having to print shells now using uh, toner, which is, you know, could get a little messy when these documents are now being handed out to the various departments and going through toner now a second time. In many cases, it'll melt, right? So shells is a perfect application, whether it's the, um, um, the, the letterhead you may be outsourcing or the shell for a certificate. Something like this on a resale has got about three tenths worth of ink. There's not a lot of ink on there. You add servicing, you're about six tenths. You, you want to two up that type of document and print 19,200 an hour. You're looking at an average of about a half a penny a page. Okay? I walked into yet another operation and, um, and they were printing some forms, right? They're doing NCR. And I saw that and I said, well, do you ever number the NCR? And they said, yes. Like this. And I said, well, why not make it look like that? And they looked at me like I had two heads. Are you crazy? Like that would, our costs would go through the roof. The audacity of adding digits in red, okay? To which I said, what you're telling me is you would like to print this, but at the price of that. And that, it, what, that is what inkjet allows you to do, right? This sheet, when it, we ran it through our cost calculator, calculates the coverage. You're looking at three tenths for service, which is really your only fixed cost fixed cost of the inkjet, that's about nine tenths uh, worth of ink, nine tenths of a cent worth of ink. So something like this, you're looking at a penny point two. So anything related to fundraising, you know, you've got numbering on it. Uh, your HR departments, too often we see HR departments, you know, print books, right, for employees. And a lot of that HR stuff is common sense. You know you can't punch the person in the cubicle next to you. Common sense. <laughs> but there are pages, even though we sometimes don't follow that rule, 
but some, you know, there are pages in that HR manual that, you know, the HR department really, really wants you to read, and they want to see it in color, and so they have to bite the bullet, oh, I guess they're going to have to do this one in color, right, big problem, right, color's a luxury, we shouldn't be printing in color, so something like this, for a document that, once read, is going to end up in a filing cabinet somewhere, you're not printing coffee table books here, this is nothing ultra graphic in nature. Okay, so a document that will end up in a file cabinet, a page like this, just slightly over a pin. This is what Inkjet allows you to do, right? Again, for those individuals that felt they needed to print this type of stuff in monochrome because they couldn't afford to do it in color, you're bringing that monochrome world into the color arena. Your, your customers will love it. And when you start to look at the Inkjet jobs that we do, there is one common denominator. And that common denominator is the fact that a lot of these jobs are predominantly black and white, with color used as a highlight. Okay? That is the common denominator. A lot of this stuff really is black and white. We have uh, utility companies, right? They, they've been told now by the government, you need to add a bar graph showing your customers their electrical consumption, all of us, our electrical consumption last year versus this year. That graph is costing them a fortune. Fortunately, they found inkjet and they're able to print a page like this. And of course, now they've gone from using shells to a white paper factory and they're printing everything beginning to end for about a penny a page doing stuff like this, okay? Inkjet is, is in large part a wonderful technology because it does not use heat, okay? And when you don't use heat, you are talking about output that is as flat as it was going in as it is coming out. It is flat paper. Um, um, in fact, that's what we like to call recently the coolest printer. <coughs> now, the, the upside of having a technology that doesn't use heat is we can run substrate through it that has glue on the back side, namely envelopes. Okay? Once again, we've seen in many cases where the, the offset press has disappeared from your premises. These are jobs you now are forced to outsource. This type of job, okay, not only people think envelopes, they think of return address and logo. The reality is with a reso, you can do variable data. So not only are you, you know, can you download now the, the database, have somebody give you the database of the, the mailing destinations, you can print that on the envelope all in one pass. You can uh, give the envelope its own individual de department, mathematics, athletics, sports. Okay, and of course with a lot of white space you might want to sit down with your customer and educate them on using that white space to promote certain events they have coming up uh, in their faculty. These are jobs that if you outsource an envelope of this nature, just return address and logo, could be anywhere from 15 to 20 cents per envelope in a major market. Um, you get into variable data, you know, you'll be charged anywhere from 35 to 40 cents and and heaven forbid you might want to use the white space, you know, up to 40 to 45 cents. When you look at an envelope, you look at the amount of ink, okay, uh, there's not a lot of ink on here. So this type of job on a reso, you're looking at about a penny per envelope, that's $10 per thousand, okay? For something that if you outsource, may well cost you two, three, four, five hundred dollars This is something you can do yourself, you can run this on a reso all day long, again, the benefit of having no heat in the device, right? It's never going to overheat. This is not going to curl up. So number eights, number nines, number tens, nine by twelves, twelve by eighteen size envelopes if you wish. You're not going to damage the unit at all. They are designed to do this kind of job. Now, we like to have fun with this, but you know, a lot of times when we look at inkjet, it does look different because it's ink, it's not toner. Toner sits on top of the paper ink bleeds into the paper, so it's a flat finish. All of you will see the difference. The reality is, um, every day, your customers go home, as we all do, and at 6, 6.30 in the evening, are bringing scads and scads worth of inkjet printed material into the house, right? Now, if you're like me, you have the blue bin right underneath the mailbox, and you do your triage right there, but if you're like my wife, she will bring everything right onto the dining room table. Everything. The, the day's mail, and most of which is inkjet printed. Okay? And the reality is, for these people, right, 
who are caught up in their jobs and their lives. The, 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 the woman here who is uh, receiving uh, a letter from the fundraising, she's an alumni. Um, she is not looking at the date of the next event. She's, of course, staring and trying to figure out, is this offset? Is this toner? There's an inkjet, right? This is what I need to see here. And, of course, the university student who just got accepted to Notre Dame, once again, is excited over the fact that he got toner printed material in the mail. So that, that is not real life. That is life for all of us in this room. We, we judge the quality. We look at that but for these individuals who, by the way, are going to take those envelopes, rip them up straight into the garbage, and go straight for the important part, the piece that's on the inside. Let's, let's keep envelopes into perspective. I know envelopes has turned into this big deal in, in, in big business. There's a lot of equipment um, now designed to print envelopes. The reality is it is very much a throwaway item. So, um, but you know what, if quality is your thing and you want, you want inkjet material, inkjet printed output to look as close to toner as possible, it can be done, right? Very easily, just get yourself some better paper, right? So when you look at, at Domtar um, and all the companies out there, it used to be the inkjet, now you can use any paper you want, right? But if you do decide to use inkjet paper which is uh, treated so that the ink doesn't totally bleed into the paper it stays somewhat above the paper so again it starts to look more like toner it used to be this type of paper was roll right it was all roll fed paper roll roll except today the paper companies are tripping all over themselves trying to keep up with now the migration to inkjet and you're starting to see a lot of roll sheet roll sheet roll sheet roll sheet and this chart is about six months old Okay, if you look at this today, my guess is you're going to see a lot more sheeted paper, right? We were doing quite nicely, um, so, you know, doing our thing with Riso, but when you get names like Canon and Xerox enter the inkjet arena, it brought a lot of interest into, into inkjets. And so uh, you see a lot more inkjet being sold now, and so these guys have had to force themselves to, to keep up. So inkjet for you really is a complement to what you're doing, uh, unless you're planning on making a big million dollar investment with some of the bigger units out there, that could be a, uh, a life-changing experience, I suspect, but when you look at resales, and I'll give you the pricing in a second, this is a compliment, it's a fairly easy decision for you and a chance for you to start integrating inkjet into your operation, so it's a compliment for most implants, commercial prints, and some of the large transactional, I guarantee you, you're getting stuff in the mail that is printed on a resale. Guarantee it because we know who our customers are and many of those individuals printing your cell phone statements your your cable bills um, And all that stuff that you're getting in the mail uh, We have hundreds of resales in those facilities all sitting next to some of the big million dollar devices So if you're wondering um, our devices can come um, equipped with a sow stitch device, okay, a sow stitch booklet maker. You can set it up to, uh, with a perfect binder that'll take up to 300 pages, duplex that's 600, 300 sheets, 600 pages all total. Uh, we have a device called an envelope wrapper, and what that will do for those of you who dabble in the mail will actually use a uh, pressure sealed envelope, and so basically you hit the green button, stand back, the, the, the variable data pages are printed, folded inside of this envelope, Water is applied, it's sealed, so basically beginning to end, it does everything, okay? So you're going to need an insert or folder, you don't need your copier for the variable data, you're going to need the offset for the, uh, for the envelope, this does it all in one pass. We also have uh, actually a configuration that you will see out on the floor today in the uh, exhibitors area. We have this unit right here, this is what we have right here. So we've got a 4,000 sheet paper deck, the... Um, 9630, I believe, is out there. It's 160 pages per minute with a stacker. This is our uh, most popular um, production configuration. And again, the message you know I want to leave you with is the fact that if you're looking at inkjet, if you're considering inkjet, it can be a huge investment. Not the case with Riso. Our devices, we've got five of them. We'll go anywhere from a low or smallest as 90 pages per minute, and we have one here at the show. Uh, all the way up to 160 pages per minute. So it's 90, 120, 130, and 160 per minute. Uh, if speed means anything to you. And I'll actually lay out the retail prices of the engine alone, right? So when you look at this pricing, it's for the engine, right? Without the, the fiery, without the accessories. 
But when you look at um, even our most expensive device at 46,000, when you start adding finishing equipment, a fire rate, you start to inch your way closer to 90 and 100 thousand dollars. That's where you max out. So that's why I say if you're thinking of inkjet and and it's it's a you know. When you look at some of the bigger equipment, you have to look at can your floor sustain the weight of that equipment? Can your budget sustain? How much volume do you need? I read where you know you need a minimum four million copies in some cases to justify the purchase of that engine equipment. You don't need to look at volume. Or, by the way, these resoles are capable of doing up to half a million a month. That is our duty cycle. And when we say half a million a month, we mean half a million a month. There's no heat. So we have customers going up to six, seven hundred thousand a month, right? On a very small device. I mean, it's it's maybe twice the size of this podium right here. So um, this is something that you know you, you get, find, put it in your corner, uh, your ink corner, and it starts with. I know one customer I personally sold to. They started off saying, you know, it's, it's just going to be forms and envelopes. We're going to be doing about twenty thousand a month. We installed the product, I visited them four months later, and they're like at 330,000 copies. And I said, well, what's going on here? What did you do? I said, why, is that too much? I said, no, it's nowhere near too much, but how did you get so much volume? He says, well, the copier went down one day, and we just put the volume over on the resale. Everybody liked the speed, it just never went back. And they almost, today, they unplugged the color copier. Um, I don't have any copier companies. <laughs> they get upset when I talk this way. But they unplugged the color copier, and, and most, most of the color is now on the resale, and the, uh, the controller loves it. Huge savings. And of course, they keep the copier for, again, the quality work. Okay? So that is our message. I'm right on time. Questions? <laughs>